Our planet is sitting on a time bomb. Ghana is at the mercy of the drastic impact of climate change, unmitigated sunshine, unpredictable rainfall, and depleting soil fertility, among others. How can the country deal with the threat of climate change while solving some of its basic problems? In a series of human-centered stories, we shine a light on some of the most basic innovative ideas that could help bring change and what the Ghana Climate Innovation Center is doing to scale up these ideas. These women are part of thousands engaged in artisanal food processing, turning cassava into gari, a popular Ghanaian food in the Brongahafu regional town of Techiman. Deaths caused by toxic smokes are on the rise in the country, and the worst victims are people involved in agro-processing and women who use harmful cooking fuels like firewood for cooking. An estimated 17,000 people die annually from toxic smokes in Ghana, according to the World Health Organization. A better source of cooking energy, like charcoal, could help reverse this. This is Accra, the nation's capital. A Ghana audit report estimates that out of over 3,000 tons of waste generated daily in this city alone, only 500 tons is collected, leaving an ugly spectacle in many parts of the city. Much of its streets and dump sites are filled with coconut waste. One man wants to change this, collecting all the coconut waste and turning them into a more human-friendly source of cooking energy. Amin Sule Abubakar is the man behind Zaku, a social enterprise seeking to turn around the way coconut waste is managed. I am just shocked at what is happening here. Just imagine the CO2 being exposed to the atmosphere. So imagine if this happens all the time. And this is just one of the dump sites out of a lot in the country. We are just destroying our own world, basically. But this is a resource for me. This is something I could make very good use of. And this is what is happening to it. So I'm just sad. Very sad, actually. Very, very sad. And this is just very close to the beach. So as you can see, there's some liquid waste. And this is all ending up into the beach. The sea is universal. So if you don't care about what's happening in Ghana, this might end up wherever you are. So what my idea is, is to just collect all the coconut waste in the city of Accra, convert it into clean, affordable energy. Over 70% of the people, even in Accra, rely on charcoal as their main source of energy. This charcoal and firewood expose a lot of uh, dangerous smoke into the atmosphere. And mostly it's our women and children that are very close to these smokes. So they inhale these dangerous smokes. They get infected by a lot of respiratory diseases. We have asked Amin to take us to the greater Accra regional town of Dodua, where his processing factory is located. We're not cutting any tree to produce this. Not a single tree is 
involved in our processes. We're protecting the environment. Number two, this burns much hotter than the coconut, than the tree or the wood, lamp wood charcoal. Because if you look at it, the fiber in the coconut makes it burn real hot. And because of the mixture with both the fiber and the shell, it lasts longer than regular charcoal. So ideally, just like three to four times longer than regular charcoal. It comes packaged in paper bag, so you don't need to tie it in a plastic bag. In fact, we even advise our customers to just light the paper bag. For three years, Zako has been on this journey producing energy from coconut waste. The trees are basically our lifeline on Earth. And say when the last tree dies, the last man dies, we're protecting the environment. So you can imagine if half the Ghanaian population is using charcoal, you can imagine the amount of trees we would be saving in our forest. Secondly, we tie normal charcoal, we tie the normal lamp with charcoal in a plastic bag. This is not packaged in plastic bag. The normal charcoal emits a lot of dangerous smoke. This doesn't give off those dangerous smokes. Um, our women who are mostly close to these fires get a lot of diseases from inhaling the smoke from the normal charcoal compared to this, right? We are helping clean the environment because if we don't pick them up, they end up at our beaches, at the street corner somewhere. What happens to it? This all contributes to climate change and our solution addresses all of these in a positive way. The work that is being done here at Zaku is part of an ambitious new plan by the Ghana Climate Innovation Center, GCIC, project to tackle climate change in Ghana by supporting climate smart initiatives. Entrepreneurs have been a big part of, you know, um, influencing change all over the world, right? And in most places, there are structures in place to help entrepreneurs become successful. Unfortunately, in the developing world and in places like Ghana, those structures are not as strong. So the Climate Innovation Centers are basically there to build an institutional framework and ensure that the path to becoming a successful entrepreneur or a successful green entrepreneur uh, is smoothing. Amin applied to the GCIC for support and over the last one year has received technical training and capital injection that means they can scale up and serve a market that currently exists for clean cooking fuels. GCIC has actually come at a very good time. We've been doing this for a number of years without support. GCIC has come in to give us that support we need. We've had a number of classroom sessions, workshops, seminars, where we've had trainings on how to grow the business. Because uh, if you look at it, business goes beyond what you're producing. We've had trainings in marketing, we have trainings in technical abilities, training in finance, and now they are going to support us with some funding to help solve some problems we have in the production process and eventually scale up. Before coming to Zaku, life wasn't easy at all. Yeah, but as I came here, I realized changes have started coming. Yeah, I was a vulcanizer on the street. Mm, pumping tires, it's not easy. We stand in the sun, working, and we do some little amount. But as I come here, I take monthly pay, and I think changes have come. In this particular video, we actually went to Accra. We went to Accra, um, right behind the uh, Independence Square. Uh, we went in fully loaded with uh, a mini fuel load loader or an excavator and about four trucks. They have this big mountain of um, coconuts over there. It's virtually turned into a dump site for coconut vendors. We went there and then we dug out all the coconut they have up there and then brought them all the way to the door. This is a very viable business. Ghana basically is a charcoal economy. Over 75% of our population use charcoal as their primary cooking fuel. And Ghana is not 
uh, the fast food economy where people would, oh, would buy f fast foods. We love to cook our own meals, right? So if majority of the Ghanaian, Ghanaian population is going to cook, the first choice of energy that comes to mind is charcoal. We tend to forget that not everybody in Accra is the middle class. And as a matter of fact, Greater Accra uses more charcoal than any other part of the country. So people changing their attitude from wood charcoal and turning to this, and us gradually scaling this to meet the demand for the general population, we're going to have a lot of positive impact. Yeah, so it measures how hot or not hot the product is. So you see, immediately you point it into Zarko, it takes you as high as 600 degrees, that is high. And this is really hot. And if you pay attention, you realize that the flame is actually blue, unlike the regular charcoal, which gives the flame that's like um, red, but then this is pure blue. Immediately you point to it, it goes high. That's what we mean by Zarko Burns Halter. And this was something that was staring me in the face almost every corner in Accra. There's a spot for coconut sellers. I've actually done a head count. There are over a thousand of them in Accra alone. Zarko is turning around what is a major problem into a solution in itself. With the support from GCIC, this may well be the solution that the country has been looking for. Yeah, so this is the Zarko for ordinary households. We sell this very cheap to the ordinary household, very cheap. These are samples you could see from an improvised machine. It's very clean, it doesn't even stain your hand, if you could see it. <laughs> so that's that cool for you. So you meet my, my first customers, my first users of Zarko. This charcoal is the best, no smoke. To be honest with you, in the beginning when my friend told me that um, his brother is going to try to use the coconut thing to make a charcoal, I wasn't convinced. But when he brings out, I saw it and then I put it in the fire, I do my tea, I'm convinced.